welcome to Technology for Noob. In this video, I would be talking about Django Logins. So Django Logging, as it says, it helps us on recording the logs or keeping the logs of whatever actions or requests that has been performed in our Django application. So when we are in the development mode, most of the time, our, our console is the only helpful tool which helps us on understanding the feedback or taking the feedback of any error which ever happened during the execution of that particular code. What if when we deploy our tool into a, some remote system and there we won't be there to observe it when the error happens. So at this particular times, we use logs to record all the errors or whatever execution has happened so that we can look at them later and can rectify the code or can find the issues what's leading to that error and hence Django provides us a logging module okay first of all there is a separate python logging module already available so you can use that logging module and write it what however you want to record your logs but because we are developing a Django application Django also incorporates the python logging module and help us on doing less part of code and getting the most of the logging with a small changes in our settings page of our application and records the logs and also allows us on manipulating the logs for our catered purpose. So let's start with the Django logging. So a Python logging configuration consists of four parts. So as I already said, Django logging is based on the logging module of the Python. So we, we would be covering to both at the same time, but very specific for the Django purpose. So what are these four parts? Logging, handlers, filters, and formatters. So these are the four key components of any logging system, which we want to include or which we want to write in our Django application. So let's look, a, look at the logging module. A logger is an entry point into the logging system. And whenever we define any logger in our configuration, it means we are defining a log level to which everything has to confine. So this kind of log levels describes the severity of the message that the logger will handle. So there are five different types or levels of logs. First, debug, info, warning, error, and critical. These are the standard log level defined in the Python. So when we say debug, we mean low level system information for debugging purposes. When we say info, a general system information like our 200 message status response is kind of an info. Then warning, where our 400 status, status codes belongs to information describing a minor problem that has occurred. Then error, information describing a major problem Similarly, critical information defining, describing a critical problem. So all these levels are being handled at the logging level. So whenever a logger receives a log, it looks for the level for which it has been defined. So let's say if a logger is defined for info level, then if a log comes for a debug, then it won't get processed from that particular logger. And that's how we can manipulate what kind of log should go through our logger and then finally reach to the log file or log message wherever we are recording. Once a logger has determined that a message needs to be processed like it has gone through okay the level is info and defined is debug so info is about debug and hence it can proceed for the next process. Once the logger has determined that the message needs to be processed it forwards it to the handler. Now what are handlers? Handlers are nothing but which defines the behavior what to do with that particular log message like writing into a file writing or displaying into the console or what kind of info or what kind of level of information has to be done with what kind of activity is defined in the handlers. One particular logger can have multiple handlers. Like I said, a particular log level or info level can be written into a console or can also be written into a file and on the both places. So that's how handlers helps us on segregating our logs or writing it in a console or file. The another information after the handler comes the filter. 
and filter can also be before handlers. So a filter is used to provide additional control over which log records are passed from logger to handler. By default, any log message that meets the log level requirement will be handled. However, filters can also get another level before logger sends that log to the handlers. And like I have given the level of information as debug in logger and handler takes, let's say debug, but I introduce a filter which says, okay, remove debugs. Then handlers would never receive the debug level, but it will receive more or above than debug level of information. Then finally at the end comes the formatters. What are formatters is nothing as the name suggests. As at the end, a log records needs to be rendered as a text, either in a file or either in a console. So in a file, you might want to format your information based on your requirement, like in such format, whether you want directly the level info or the statement, or you want the file name, time, etc., etc., based on your requirement. So we will explore about the formatting in the coming part of the formatters. So let's start with our practical and uh, let's get introduced with the logging in Django. To start with, I have already created a dummy Django project, which does nothing but it has four APIs. As you can see in my URLs, add user, add something, add new with some value, add new error with some error. I mean, just to create some real life scenarios. So this is just nothing but it just takes and it just says added user. This particular URL or function takes and again just does something. Then similarly, this one sends a report. This one sends a status of 500 if some random number is greater than 50 or else a status of 200. Then similarly, add new error where I'm making an actual exceptional error and I'm sending the trace back into my print command. To see all this thing in action, I have a notebook which will call the REST APIs of my Django application. And as you can see, I'm just going to call and you will see the response in my console side by side. And I have also added a real life scenario where I'm printing the hello so that I get to see a feedback kind of in my from my application. Calling the second one passed, I got the response. Similarly, I got the, I called the third API. It was not greater than 50. Let's say again, 200 response, 46. One more time, 53, 200 response, ah, which is fine. And, and we got the error, which I wanted now 88. So it throwed the internal server error and we got the ex feedback from our console. And then the last one, which will throw the traceback error and we get that error. Now the idea is to have the logs of our Django application rather than observing the console. We want everything to be saved in our logs. This is how my system looks like. This is how my setting page looks like. There's nothing new. Now from onwards here, we would add the log configuration in our settings page. Before that, if anybody is interested, how I can include the logging module of my Python in this current status. So let's check one particular example where logging dot, let's say info, so logging dot info, and then I can just add something, some message and we can check the response. Now, if I do hello, add user, but that, but that log information didn't show up in here as the logging function is used to save it in a log rather than sending it into the console to send it into the console. We have to add the configuration, keeping it aside for now. Let's directly jump into the how to configure Django logging in our settings page. As I said earlier, logging configuration would have four parts, but, but at our scenario right now, we would care about only logger, handler and formatter, we would ignore the filter for now. So as I said, four parts, I mean now three, we have to have loggers, then we need handlers, then we need formatters. 
and this is our now skeleton for defining our logging configuration. So before I start adding the configuration for loggers, we need to get familiar with few of the standard formats which are also given in the Django documentation. So if even after listening to this video, I would strongly recommend to go through this particular page of logging of Django and, and here you would get all the information needed and the basic configuration which you can use. So to define the loggers, there are some standard starting points which comes with the Django by default and those starting Django loggers are so one standard Django and the another one is called Django.request then there is a Django.server then Django.template, Django.db backend and security. So each particular logger has a different purpose for it and it serves a particular job which we can use for our ease of code or usage. So what Django does it, if I just provide Django, then it will catch everything, whatever is available in that execution and it will just give us for the log and the level uh, or the default level for the Django logger is the debug, which is the least level which we have. So to define the loggers, there is a particular format which we have to use and it is also available in the example which are given here. So as you can see here, if I have a Django logger, I can use any number of loggers and then specifically I have to define what to do with those in the handlers. So let's start and writing it. So let me first start with the Django. So I define a Django logger. I'm in the logger if you care. And then those attributes which we want to add here. So in the logger, once we decided about the logger, we define what handlers we want for that we have to define the handler and then then at what level we want to give the uh, level of logs that is i will the default is also debug but i am specifically defining debug and now let's think of what we can provide for the handlers for that we have to provide handlers or we have to configure the handlers now in here handlers this name can be anything so right now i am using file but it can be any name. Within the handler, we have to define the config. So the configuration for handlers would be as given in the example. So I have level, what level. So just to be careful about. So if I am giving level debug in my handler, then whatever coming from the loggers would go to handler and then handler would again decide, okay, what kind of log level I have to cater. So it, here, if I provide info, then whatever comes from the logger, the level in the logger is debug, but handler would filter it and would say whatever log comes above info or info, I would only care about those. So, but for now, I will just say debug. Now class. So these are the default thing coming from the logging module. So logging dot file handler, and then you can have any kind of handlers you want from the login logging map module of the python then file name so i have already created a logs folder in my system configuration here i have already added the logs and the files which i want to use here then right now it's debug.log now once we have defined the handlers we want to let's ignore for the formats for now and let's observe what happens okay there is one thing which is missing in the handlers now I can use one of the handler which I have defined is the file and that's how we call the handlers and attach it with the loggers. Once we are done, let's check our console. Dictionary does not verify a version. Yeah, sure. So we have to add a version here. Version one. Save. And good. Now let's go and check our execution. So let's execute this particular page. Now this all has been written. Let's go and check our folder and debug.log. Okay. I would restart. Okay. Now let's restart. It creates my file and let's edit it. Now these are the default things coming as a return. Now let's go and execute some command. 
so i execute this then another one then another one then another one and now let's check the log so from here if you see the first log happened here and that's the format because we have not given any formatting so that's how it is working then we have the next execution then our trace back and that's how our logs get recorded so as you can see just by adding few lines and we are good we are already getting logs in from our application now let's learn about the formatter and then we will worry about something else later so formatter would again have some configurations so in formatter the configuration is all followed of python's logging module so just to simply observe i have just given a random name even you can rename it something else so simple re now the format so the level name and the message and the style this is a default so default style of the python is uh, python login module is the percent mark and then the another one which exists is the curly bra bracket and the third one which exists is the uh, dollar or pound sign now similarly right now i am just using the curly bracket and what this actually does is it, it gives the information how to save the log let's say the next message come whether to append it immediately or to append with the next line all this information is provided using the formatter or with the information of the style within the formatter now as we have de defined the formatter in our logging configuration now how to introduce it to our configuration so if if you remember the process how it was so first the logger then the handler then the formatter so our handler would call the formatter so the formatter which we want to use so formatter which we want to use formatter and the one which we define is the simple re simple re and bracket and comma and we save it i check my log unable to set formatter it said unable to set let me just check i found the issue and that is the name here formatters let me check now yeah finally worked now this log would get updated and as you can see there is a difference in the log now earlier if you observe the file does didn't had the level name before it now it has the level name before it now let's uh, simply check our rest calls and see how it works now execute 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 and we will get to see the logs now so we are getting the format now now let's experiment a little bit about few stuffs now here if i have defined my level as debug and now in handlers i define info and let's check in the another file let's see two and let's also add some formats so level name message similarly we can have time we can have many more many more which depends on your choice like for example i'm adding some more level of information like level name time module process thread message and and many more so right now what are the changes which we have added we have changed the file name we have added few more information and we have changed the level of information held handled in the handler so our logger is still the debug and our handler is info now let's check after i save it i will get my log files so this is the log file i will open it now just one more one information info when we once we reload we used to get all the debug information now we are getting just info now let's see the execution good and if i check here i only get whatever is about info so simple now just by adding few configuration file we are getting this many of information getting the log and everything in one place now let's so kind of our introduction is kind of finished uh, but i have one i had one question now how how should i actually write functions where i have to always use whatever is coming through the request and and also i had a question where is my this some message i do not see it in my logs right if you observe it is not in my logs so from here onwards this is all about the experiments which i did and i would encourage you to do your own experiments but this is something which would really give you a head start
to answer that particular question which i had about not getting my logging info not 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 receiving the login info log in my particular logger the reason was first i have to define a default logger for that so right now if i define the logger in this particular manner then whatever i will do would happen with this particular logger but this particular logger or the default example which we get is using this particular page as a main module for it right now we have to define that we don't have to look this page as a module but we have to look this particular django as the logger for logging the responses so let's say i define it here then now instead of logging i have to use this particular logger for now once i have added and modified it let's see did it make any change to our system uh, for the sake of clarity i would just make it three and save let's check my console which is fine now i have to look for my third log which is this particular file let me open it in the notepad then let's execute some command let's observe the log so this is the one which i executed now here hello add user came and this is coming from here this print statement and then i have some logger dot info which is some message let's check here and as you can see now here i get my particular log which i added through my logger now why i did all this so there is a particular reason for doing this so when we deploy our application through some in some server let's say then there are wsgi which we have to use and that particular time this print statement are not printed at all you won't find those information and also they sometime a reason for halting your process or it does not show you in the console window at all so for that particular purpose now based on this new understanding i can have this log message and i would use the logging print let's say checkpoints or my my information related in information rather than just about the request or the server or the django log i would want my print statement and that's how i can define this kind of information in my console so this is a kind of a nice introduction now i will just modify few bit of my code which would be available to you but i want to show you how exactly it would work at the end of the day after a little modification on our code so let's just observe few thing i will just execute this all and we got all the errors as it used to happen and if i change again all these informations are here which are good and my message also i am able to print whenever i want i am going to change my code now a little bit to show you the full information how i would introduce more loggers in between and would be able to print those information in my system so i have added few more information as you can see here i have added some info then some logger with warning some logger with info and and so on then i have error info so a varied information loggers which i specifically want to be available for my checkpoint purpose in the logs now there is one more thing let's just change the file here so 3 4 and done our code is updated our fourth log is also available log 4 with only one input our console and our notebook i will just execute it which got executed and when i come here and check as you can see warning error this are my additional information which i have added for my own purpose and that's how we were able to record it now just to cover few missed out pieces as you have already seen and now now just a small bit of code is able to help us on getting our logs similarly you can define n number of loggers n number of handlers each logger can have many number of handlers like even if i define another file i can just simply call it here and it would write it in this two files at one go let's let's see a demo of it so let's say 
here I would say debug and let's say 6 and this one 5. Now this handler name is 2 and let's call file save it. Our console is correct. Now as you can see two logs came in my system. Edit with notepad. So I have 5 which has only info and I have 6 which has everything. Now I am going to execute my notebook to generate logs. So one system has only info and another has debug and above and that's how this all works. Just to add the last words. As you can see in the fairly complicated, now it's not even a complicated for us once we get familiar with it. But as you can see, I have formatters which can have different kind of formatters. All the formatters can be called separately in the handler. Similarly, I can have my filters and the filters can be defined specific to my purpose need or my special requirements. And even it has even more kind of supports on such cases. Overall, we can have any number of customization with us and at the end you can always follow the logging module and understand more about the logging in Django. But this small demo and few descriptions would be really helpful for you. I hope so. Uh, let me know if you have any feedback and if you have any doubts, please feel free to reach and comment and thanks for your time and have a great day.